Having an exact item or clothing in an image is a big request and also a big challenge when it comes to stable diffusion. The main issue is that even with the best setup, you're only going to get around 90% similarity and never a one to one. But with a little creativity and some extra effort, we can get better results in some cases. And with that, let's get started. The first option when talking about clothing is the easiest, but the least accurate, and that is using the image prompt method. Go into the input image tab, click advanced, then load the image of your clothing item. Make sure to have image prompt selected and raise the stop at and the weight to at least 0.9 each. And now we can go from here and use a simple text prompt to put this in a brand new image. And we should get something pretty close to our image prompt. This is the method you will want to use if having the clothing item exact is not important. If the design is fairly simple, you might be able to get close enough to be indistinguishable. But if there are any logos or specific designs, they won't come through accurately. If this is okay, but you want a different pose, we can add a pirate candy image to get a better one. And even a face swap photo if you want. If you do use a face, you want the stop at to at least 0.9 and the weight to 0.9 or even slightly over 1. And depending how different the pirate candy image clothes are, we might have to lower the stop at and weight quite a bit for that. Then generate again. And with this, you should get something similar to the pose and face. Now lastly, with the image prompt method, let's say you have a photo and model already and you want it all the same but only a piece of the clothing changed. We can load that image into the inpaint, mask the area where the clothing would go, then go into the advanced tab, debug mode, and then the control tab, and select mixing image prompt and inpaint. Before anything, let's go back to the image prompt tab and make sure that only the image prompt image of the clothes is loaded. And your image should be like this where it's mostly only showing the item you want transferred with no background or other clothes showing. If this was a full body image, it might not work correctly. Now back to inpaint. And make sure to be on the default inpaint preset and then generate. And overall, this will probably give the closest results you can get with image prompt method, but still only 90% on most things. These could probably pass if you didn't have the logo. And just to quickly show, it doesn't need to be a clothing item without a person in it, the clothing item just needs to be the majority of the image for it to work. So this works great on changing clothing items as long as it doesn't need to be an exact match. Now if you do need the clothing item to match exactly, then we will need to do a little more work. I have this image of a dress. What I'm going to do with it only works if the clothing is in the shape as if someone were already wearing it, and that is because we are going to inpaint a person around it. If the image you are using isn't just the clothing item and has someone in it already that you want to change, don't worry, we will work on that next. With this, we first want to remove the background, which should be pretty easy. There are many free removers, but the main two I've had luck with are Photo Room and Adobe Express. Photo Room does have a max free size, but my images are usually below it. I don't think Adobe does. The only reason to try both is sometimes one does a better job than the other, depending on the picture. They both work about the same. Drag in or load the image, and let it do its work. Then download the new transparent image. Now we can load this into PhotoP. First thing to make sure here is we want a final image in a resolution that Focus uses. This will give us a much better chance at a good image. Select the entire image and copy. Then click File, New, and in the width and height, put in a resolution you want from Focus. For this, I will use 832 by 1216. Then hit Create. Then edit and paste. If the image you pasted in is much larger, then you'll have to resize it. This can be done by selecting the layer you just pasted in and going to Edit and Free Transform. And then resize it however you like. Now you want to save this image. So File, Export As, PNG, and then name your file. Now the next step is to create a blackout image for the mass we will be loading. For this, select the same layer again and go to Image, Adjustments, Exposure, and turn the exposure all the way down, then hit OK. Then we want to save this file with our other one. Now back to Focus, and the first thing to do is go to Advanced, Debug Mode, and if you had the Mixing Image Prompt and InPaint checked from before, uncheck that now. Then go to the InPaint tab, 
and check Enable Mask Upload. Now let's load our first image in the left side, then our black mask in the right side. Now the black area here will protect the dress and everything around it will be changed by focus. So simply type a prompt up to here that matches the scene you want and then generate. And it might take a bit to get to the right position and scale. We aren't worried about the face right now since that can be fixed, just the overall look. And hopefully the hands and feet aren't terrible since those are the worst to fix. If you are generating but still getting a little bit of pixelation on the edges, then you can use the mask, erode, or dilate setting. Turning this up or down will increase or decrease the size of the mask. For this, if we turn it up just one, the black area will decrease just a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how much this changes on a pixel scale, but it's pretty small per point. The bad part of this is it can start changing the edges of your product. Depending on the item, it might not matter or even be noticed, but for some, it will. For a clothing item like this, it's probably fine. But do make sure when you're creating an item that it does not change too much. And this will help the edges blend in a little bit better. When you finally get one that looks good, we can drag it down. And when we're finished, we can turn off the extra mask in the debug menu. Ideally, we want the image to have decent hands and feet. The hands aren't that bad, but let's see if we can improve them a little. Mask the hands and make sure to be on improved detail. And in the new prompt box, I will put detailed female hands. Then generate again. Since they are sideways and half hidden, I can get away with a little more here. And these are decent. Drag that down and now let's try to improve the face. And we'll do the same as before, mask the area. In the prompt box I'll add detailed girl face and then generate. And we can keep trying if none of these work, but I can live with these for now. So all in all, this method isn't really that hard with the right setup. From here, you can outpaint some if you want more background or add or remove whatever else suits your needs. If you have an image like this, where you just want the shirt and everything else changed, we can do that too. And I'm using this image to show that even just a plain and somewhat poor phone camera photo of a normal boring guy can be used doesn't need to be a professional photo shoot. I already cropped this image to a focus appropriate resolution of 768 by 1344. I will use Photo P for this again. Photoshop is better if you have access to it, but this will work fine. Because this is a random image and the colors behind the t-shirt are so similar, it's hard to use the easier quick select tools here. So for this, I will use the magnetic lasso. This works pretty well, but does take a little time. If you haven't used the magnetic lasso before, just click to start and run the mouse edge near where you want it to go, and it should follow. Occasionally clicking to set points. Sometimes you will need to pull it back and force it to where you want by making small clicks and moving forward. Then once that is selected, I will do another edit copy and edit paste. Then I want to add another layer here, and I will do that by going to the top and clicking layer then new, then layer. Then I will select the bucket tool and fill that new layer with white. Then drag that layer underneath the one we just pasted with the shirt. And now with the shirt layer only selected, do like we did before and go to the image, adjustments, exposure, and turn that all the way down. And then save that image. Then go back to focus and load the original image into InPaint. Then check the Enable Mask Upload box again, then load the mask. Now you have a couple options here. First, let's keep it on Improve Detail, erase anything in the additional prompt, then type in a prompt for the scene that you want, and we can slowly turn up the denoise between generations. Doing it this way on Improve Detail will keep closer to the original composition if that's what you're looking for but as the denoise goes up, the more it changes. This can help keep the proportion and scales a little better, but it will still keep a lot of the original image features even with the high denoise. If you want a little more freedom, we can switch over to the default inpaint setting and start from there. And as we go, we can turn the denoise down a little if the image is getting too random or losing the correct scale. 
Again, it can take a little patience and tweaking of the prompt and settings to get the right outcome. Eventually we will get something pretty decent. Like before, hands and feet are the most important, because the face can always be fixed. But I like this, and it's pretty good already. And again, you can go from here and outpaint the image, or inpaint other items if you wish. But that's the basics of this method. Not really that difficult, just a little extra work. Now moving on, we can also do shoes using a basic photo with the same process as before. Taking the photo, removing the background, then using one of the selection tools to remove the legs, adding a white layer for the background, and then using the exposure setting to blacken out the shoes layer. And going through the same method as the previous image where we only wanted to keep the shirt, you can use improved detail to keep the form of the legs and change most of the background, or go with default in paint and a slightly lower denoise to get a mostly changed image but the legs still in a similar position. Once you understand the basics, you can apply it to most clothing items that are already worn, or at least in the shape of being worn. Now let's say you have a product like a small Bluetooth speaker. This is another image taken by a phone. Actually, we will go through the same process of removing the background, resizing the image to a focus resolution, and creating a black mask. For objects like this, the hard part can be the lighting and or the reflections on the item. You also might have to bring in the mask a little with the erode or dilate option, since it's easy to get white outline around the object. However, when bringing in the mask, the AI likes to add onto the product quite often. I found that not describing this as a Bluetooth speaker and just saying a small object has helped. Otherwise, calling it a Bluetooth speaker often makes the program add onto the product, trying to make it closer to what it knows as a Bluetooth speaker. The last tip is about getting characters to hold items. Doing this from scratch can get more complicated than it's worth and is its own separate video. This is especially difficult on clear or very reflective bottles as whatever lights, images, or colors you can see reflected in the bottle are locked in. The easiest way around this is to have you or someone hold the item yourself and then in-paint around it again. Depending on how much you want replaced, you can easily make a loose mask around the item and then in-paint the rest. This isn't the best example image as the item is half in the pocket and on a very distinctive shirt. But even with this, you can change the person and the background pretty easily while still having the original part blend in. You could always mask the hand after and try to change that if that's something you want. But this is just a few tips for you guys on how to add real objects or clothing to an image. I want to add an extra note here about a focus fork created by Mashbit. If you don't know that name, he's the top collaborator on focus and probably one of the main reasons it's still going as strong as it is. In his fork, there's the ability to auto-generate a mask from several different models including one that allows you to prompt for the item to mask, and it does a decent job of recognizing the elements. If you are interested in giving this a try, I will leave a link to the GitHub page. And that's all I have for you guys in this one. I hope it was useful, and I will see you in the next one.